In this exercise, we're going to be discussing corridor assemblies. Currently, I'm in the 01 assembly 1A drawing, which is located in your tutorials folder, which you can find a link to down in the description below. Now, you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a corridor assembly? Well, you have to go back to what exactly is a corridor. In another course, we discussed corridors and what they do. Now, corridors are typically associated with roadway design. And when you're dealing with roadway design, you're dealing with road sections. Typically, whenever you're looking at details from a municipality, they typically have road sections that they abide by. Now, this corridor assembly is going to be used by our corridor in order to duplicate all of our sections along our roadway, which is attached to our road alignment, which is essentially our roadway center line. So there's going to be a lot of civil 3D objects that are going to more or less be linked to each other. We have our roadway alignment, we have our roadway profile, then we have our corridor, and lastly we have our corridor assembly, which is what we're going to be going over in this exercise. So let's go ahead and create our assembly. We'll do that by going up to our home tab and then to the create design panel. Then we have a drop down for assembly. We'll select this. We're going to select create assembly. And then for a name, we're going to call this primary road full section. So typically within a full section, you're showing both sides of the roadway. For simplicity's sake, we're going to leave everything at its defaults, then we'll click OK. Then our command line is asking us to specify an assembly baseline location. Essentially, you want to be able to find a place just kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, in order to drop in your assembly. And then you'll notice once you click that area, you get almost like another interface. In other words, the rest of your drawing more or less disappears and now you're just solely focused on your roadway assembly. But however, if I zoom out, I can see the rest of my drawing. I'm going to zoom previous a couple times to get back to the original view. There we go. Now we're going to begin adding some sub-assemblies. Now we have assemblies and now all the bits and pieces that we're going to be generating to add to our roadway are called sub-assemblies. We'll do that by bringing up our tool palette first. Type in TP. Then we get our tool palette. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to stretch this out a little bit more. Okay. Now what we'll start off with is we have a lanes tab and we have a generalized list of all of the different lanes that we have access to. I'm going to select Lane Super Elevation AOR. And then we get a list of properties and under Advanced is where we're going to be focusing our attention. We're going to make sure that this assembly is going to be on the right side. The width is going to be instead of 12, let's go with 3.5. And then for potential pivot, we're going to select No. Then our command line is asking us to select marker point within assembly. We're going to select our box right here. And as you can see, we now have a lane subassembly that's attached to our assembly baseline. I'm going to exit out of this. And then I'm going to select my subassembly. And I don't like it being 3.5. I'm going to make that. 13.5, that makes a little bit more sense. I'll zoom out a bit. And now you can see that the width has been increased. Next, we're gonna add our curb and gutter subassembly. We'll do that by going into basic. And then under basic, there's basic curb and gutter. Go ahead and click this. And now our command line is saying, select a marker point within the assembly. Okay, we're gonna select this red marker point. And there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of this. Now, what if you accidentally attach your subassembly to the wrong marker point? Let's go ahead and experiment with that. I'm going to delete this subassembly. I'm going to select basic curb and gutter once again. And I'm going to select this bottom marker point. Press escape to exit out of that. And then I'm just going to select my subassembly. I'm going to select, you can see a blue grip right here. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to select Control, right click, and select the endpoint of this subassembly. And there you have it. 
Now I'm going to add a basic sidewalk subassembly. I'll go into my basic tab, basic sidewalk. Then I'm going to go into my properties. And I'm going to make sure it's on the right side. The width, I'm going to change that to 1.5. I'm going to leave the depth as it is. For the buffer width, I'm going to change that to 0.5 for both. Next, I'm going to select my marker point, which is going to be right here. And then it attaches to our curb and gutter subassembly. Press Escape. Lastly, I'm going to add a daylight subassembly. I'm going to select Basic Side Slope Cut Ditch. I'm going to go into my properties. I notice that it's going to be on the right side, and I'm going to leave everything else at its defaults. Then I'm just going to select this marker point, and there you have it. Press Escape to exit out of that command. Now, if you remember, when we were naming our assembly, we wanted to show a full section. So we need to actually show the other half of our roadway section. We'll do that by selecting our sub-assemblies, right-click, then select Mirror. Then select our assembly baseline right here. And there you have it. So that's how you go about creating a assembly within Civil 3D.